Spotify says negative two decibels. One mastering engineer will say negative point three. Another, another one. Point two, another, another one. Point one, another one, another one. Negative one decibel true peak. There is so much noise. But what exactly is the correct ceiling to set your limiter to? And the answer is, it depends, but not on what you might think. See, limiters aim to attenuate a signal before it reaches a nominated peak threshold. And by preventing that ceiling going above the threshold, a signal can be raised to utilize all the additional headroom, at which point a ceiling is set to dictate what the nominal peak level of the limiter's output will be. Now, why did I say nominal? Because your nominal peak level or ceiling doesn't always correlate to the output peak level. Due to the ballistics of some limiters, they can overshoot several tenths of a decibel. And due to the nature of sample-based digital audio, there also may be some inter-sample peaks present between two two different sample points. In both of these instances, it will cause the output to go over the ceiling or the nominated peak level. Now, this is why you get various recommendations like negative 0.3 or 0.2 or 0.5. They're all guesstimates aiming to negate the side effects of limiting and sample-based audio. But I don't do guesstimates. I like assertive and definitive decision-making, like you smashing the like button, clicking subscribe, and ticking the notification bell. Without a limiter, going over zero decibels would be a nightmare of clipping, distortion, and unusable audio. However, overshoots from a limiter and into sample peaks are typically tenths of a decibel and span in the time frame of single digit milliseconds, sometimes longer, but the harmonic distortion introduced by digital clipping at this magnitude is around negative 50 decibels full scale below the nominal program material, which means it's often inaudible. When it is audible is in sustained passages of clipping or when overs registers as whole integer values above zero decibels where distortion becomes really clear. So to audition this, what we're going to do is we're going to first add a hard clipper after our metering. See, modern DAWs use 32-bit audio, so your signal never plays back clipping even when the meters are in the red. A hard clipper at zero decibels full scale effectively acts like the digital ceiling your audio will have when it's exported. Next, you want to add an AAC codec at 96 kilobits per second, and this is the normal audio quality Spotify streams to mobile, desktop, and tablet device. Devices. When your master is transcoded to lossy formats, this is the process it uses and it chews up headroom and increases the signal's peak level. So it's important to audition how these changes will sound on your master when a consumer hears it. So now we've got that, we're going to make three markers. We're going to find the loudest true peak, the loudest short term LUFS, and also make any markers for passages of sustained bass. I've already went ahead and done this, and the max LUFS is also the same passage with sustained bass. Here we're going to audition and identify both orally and visually how much of an impact the overs, intersample peaks, and signal above a ceiling is actually affecting what we hear. All right, so let's look at doing this. I'm going to start my ceiling at negative 0.2 because that's usually where I have it at default. We have Ozone 10's codec enabled. Okay, so that's enabled to 96 kilobits per second. We have a level meter so we can monitor our levels, um, even though we're going to be using our ears to listen right now. And then after that, we've got a zero decibel hard clipping. So any signal going over zero decibel, we're going to assume it's going to be hard clipped. And that's why we've got that there for auditioning purposes. What we can do here to sort of hear the effect of that clipping, we can bypass this on and off, as well as visually look at what's being clipped down here. So let's monitor this firstly, this true peak. Easy to say it was mutual, but don't think it was easy to say. I'm curious. Point one, what will happen there? Look at this peak level. Easy to say it was mutual, but don't. Oh, that squashes a little bit, that kick there. Let me put that on loop. Mm, it's very subtle, but it's just a bit too hard for my liking. Bring that back down to point two. Easy to say it was mutual, but don't think it was in No, I don't think the peaks are negatively affected by that clipping. I know for a fact the bass is. I know for a fact this low end here gets a bit funny. So let's audition this here. I wish you heard. I wish you heard. Now, 
I know there's two sections of this audio. First is this sustain section and then this kick hit here. I think that's not too bad. Let's have a listen here. Ooh, it chokes, it chokes the low end that clipping. When it, when it hard clips, that low end gets really choked in. You can hear that. It's almost like that the energy in the low frequencies sort of like shift up a bit. So that ceiling at point two isn't doing me any satisfaction. I'm going to bring it down a bit. At point four, at point four, that kick just sustains a bit, bit better. I'll play it three times at point two and then three times at point four. Much better, much better. The, the clipping isn't as bad, like it's there, but it's it's not bad. It's It sort of works for the music. It's not negatively artifacts like <laughs> crunching away. Okay, so, We've monitored the True Peak and the Mac Short Term LEFS. Typically now, what I would do is I would take the limiter here, okay, and audition start to end. This is just your peak and your sh Mac Short Term RMS section. So your loudest point by average value, your loudest point by peak value, are just markers to set this ceiling. You still have to audition everything before you export it, but this, at least for this particular material, you know how I said it depends? 0.4 decibels is the ceiling based on what I've auditioned here. I might listen to the song and there might be other sections where it's crunching up a bit and I might back that ceiling off a little bit more, but this process will help you set your ceiling every single time consistently so you don't destroy your masters. Because remember when I said at the start of the video, what exactly is the correct ceiling to set your limiter to? And the answer is, it depends. This is the process it depends on, auditioning the overs and how the clipping sounds itself. Now, I've left three elephants in the room. Firstly, Spotify's recommendations. Negative one or negative two decibel true picks. These are just recommendations because not everybody uploading to Spotify is gonna be uploading masters from a dedicated mastering engineer. A lot of artists uploading to Spotify will master it themselves and to avoid emails from disappointed artists that their music is distorted during playback, Spotify gives them a recommendation that is by far truly safe for them to adhere to. However, the process I've laid out for you negates this because you've already had the opportunity to hear the distortions present from the transcoding process and adjust your limiter accordingly. Next, Apple Digital Masters negative one decibel true peak. Now, as a certified Apple Digital Master provider, my process for producing Apple Digital Masters is very different from what we've discussed as it adheres to a very detailed and stringent guideline Apple has laid out for this certification. And to do this, I have a separate bus which takes the audio in from my A to D converter and that goes through a true peak limiter set to negative one decibels true peak. And before before delivering that file to a client, I convert the master using an Apple codec droplet and check for overs in the terminal to make sure there are no overs on the encoded format present. You're probably asking, you use negative one decibel true peak for Apple digital masters, use a true peak limiter, everything you've said you don't want to do on these masters, why don't you just do that for all your masters and call it a day? So majority of my clients focus on genres like pop, hip hop, rap, EDM, dance, and want to sound the biggest and the best, which means using every last bit of bandwidth available and they're not necessarily concerned with pursuing Apple Digital Masters as a distribution option. So having a method to achieve big, loud masters in a careful and calculated manner is why I've presented to you the method I have choose to go with. Finally, why all this? Why not just use a true peak limiter and avoid the kerfuffle? Well, I don't like the sound of true peak limiters. And to be honest, I don't know why. Just when I use them, they don't work. and at least to my ear, they don't sound as good. But that's a topic for another video.